Hello, my name is Tara and I'm here today to deliver my dissertation presentation titled Legal Engineering, AI in the Legal Industry. So without further ado, I will jump right in and make a start. Throughout the presentation, I will cover the following topics, which outline the project from an abstract point of view, my overall aim and the objectives of the project, the literary research I carried out within the areas of AI and its applications and the law, what methods I used for my data analysis, the design and development of my system, the overall novelty of completing my project, my contributions to the research community, what intentions I have for future work, and finally, I will cover what the outcome of my aims and objectives is. The overall aim of my project is to design and develop an intelligent legal system, which will streamline the current legal process. And in the next slide, we will look at the objectives I have to meet in order to achieve the same. Here are the objectives that I must carry out. These include completing thorough qualitative research in the areas of AI and law, including the criminal justice system. Additionally, I must conduct a case study on motoring cases to analyse trends and correlation among motoring and driving offences. Finally, I was required to design and develop a framework and intelligence system to be used by legal professionals. In this slide, I will briefly touch on several areas that I covered within my research into AI and its applications. Artificial intelligence is the creation of computer systems that can learn from past experiences. AI can be further divided into weak AI and strong AI, which are used to demonstrate the level of intelligence of the system. Machine learning is the study of a machine's ability to learn processes. It can be broken down into two techniques. These are supervised and unsupervised learning. Data science is the process of extracting information and knowledge from raw data and translating it into useful management information. The area of data science involves statistics, programming and business expertise. Decision support systems are intelligent systems that provide meaningful information to experts to aid decision making. This includes the use of expert system approaches alongside decision models, which makes them model-based expert systems. Technology is applying science or knowledge to solve practical problems and conceive inventions. Additionally, here are a number of industries that are making use of AI in some way. Similarly to the previous slide, I will now outline the areas of the law that I explored during my qualitative research. Within the law, there are a number of different aspects. The most commonly known areas of the law are presented on screen. Property law handles all transactions that are made regarding property or assets. Commercial law oversees businesses and corporations and how they make sales. Family law attends to all circumstances which may involve families or children. Human rights is an area which deals with the Human Rights Act 1998. Criminal law can include anything from theft to money laundering right through to murder. There are seven types of court within the UK. These are the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, the High Court, Crown Court, Family Court, County Court and the Magistrates Court. Each court has a particular area of the law that is heard within it. In the next slide, I will briefly explain the process followed within the criminal justice system and the individuals who interact with it. Displayed on screen is the flow used when deciding which court a criminal case should be trialled in. The case begins its journey within the magistrate's court for a hearing. It is then decided which category the offence fits into. If it is a summary offence, which is a less serious case, then there will be a summary trial held within the magistrate's court. For trial either way offences, the magistrate will decide the jurisdiction or the defendant will elect for trial. Either way, it will be trialled within the magistrate's or Crown Court. Finally, indictable only offences are very serious cases and therefore trial will be held within the Crown Court. Magistrates' courts deal with a large volume of less serious cases. If a criminal case is more serious, it will be heard within the Crown Court, as members of the judiciary in magistrates' courts are not trained in practising the law, but volunteers within the community. To carry out my case study, I followed the data science ecosystem process, which is outlined on screen. I will now explain each stage in more detail. 
The data collection stage of the process involves sourcing the required data, which I completed through manual extraction, reading and analysing 50 cases to find the data I required. Stage 2 of the process, data pre-processing, involves translating raw data and figures into useful information. This includes cleaning the data set so that it does not contain missing values, outlier values or have a poor format. The data exploration stage is where a number of analysis tools are used to explore the data and make useful observations. There are three techniques that can be used. Visualizations, summary statistics and hypotheses tests. The initial three steps of the process are repeated as many times as necessary due to the importance of collecting, cleaning and analysing the correct data. When the iterations of the initial three steps have been complete, the data modelling stage begins. This step is to allow the analyst to work on ideas in more depth, deciding if they are relevant to the problem at hand. The final stage of the data science ecosystem, data visualisation and reports, is the one which needs the most attention. The data scientist must have an incredible amount of domain knowledge and understand complex theories. However, within the final step, they must be able to simplify their findings and communicate them in an uncomplicated manner. Within the system design and development section of my project, I designed an intelligent legal decision support system named Versus. Additionally, I built a framework which will inject the intelligence into the proposed system. Based on the data analysis carried out, the system shall make the following decisions about each of the pieces of data inputted. Males are more likely to offend than females. Individuals in the 10 to 30 age group are more common to offend than those in the 30 to 50 or 50 to 75 age group. If an offender does not hold a license, they are more likely to be guilty. In the instance an offender is not insured, chances are higher of them being proven guilty. When there are more fatalities recorded, there is a higher probability of the individual being proven guilty. Finally, should the offence have taken place in one of the top four cities, Newcastle-upon-Tyne, Kenarvon, Bradford or Sheffield, there is more chance of the offender being guilty. Each of these observations are solely based on the data collected and analysed within the case study. I will demonstrate how the framework functions through the use of some examples. A 25-year-old male from Sheffield who has been charged with three counts of causing death by dangerous driving, does not hold a full licence and does not have insurance on the car he was driving, would be 100% guilty according to the framework, due to having met all six of the key elements which drive the final judgment. Alternatively, a 68-year-old female from Chester, who has been accused of speeding, holds a full driving licence, has third-party insurance and has not caused any fatalities, would be 0% guilty due to not triggering any of the elements within the framework. The use of this framework would be to assist defence solicitors and judges whilst carrying out any risk analyses on new cases. Having heard the judgement of the application, they will then be more informed when making their own decision. The novelty of my project is to streamline the legal judgement process and aid legal professionals in completing the cumbersome tasks they carry out daily because the current judgement process is made up entirely of manual work and legal professionals spend too much time doing monotonous, boring tasks. I had been faced with the difficult challenge of collecting my data. Prior to completing my case study, I spent a lot of time reading previous cases to gather the data I needed. I accumulated information from 50 cases and produced an Excel sheet, which proceeded to assist me in designing and assembling my framework. I would like to make this case study available to the research community in the form of a research paper which I aim to submit for publishing. Due to the stringent timescales in place surrounding the completion of my project, I have been unable to develop the whole versus system. However, it will be developed in full in the foreseeable future. It is my intention to continue with academia as I embark on my journey as a PhD student continuing to research and develop within the area of AI and law. In this slide, I will revisit my aims and objectives and share the outcome. I have met my aim as I have designed the interface and the intelligent framework that will operate in the background to aid legal users when making decisions and in turn streamlining the process. I have also completed each of the objectives. I carried out qualitative research on AI and law I completed qualitative research on the criminal justice system. I conducted a case study on motoring cases. 
And finally, I designed and developed a framework and an intelligent legal decision support system. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch my presentation. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or would like to get in touch, please reach me using the email address on screen. Thanks again.